Hello, this is Dr. Do again. This video is outside of medicine. Continue the, um, uh, with the Iliad by Homer. I'm going to continue to read. He sank on the spot, hunched in his dear companion's arms, gasping out his life as he withered along the ground. Like an earthworm stretching out in death, blood pooling, soaking the earth dark red. Hardy, Pavlogonians, working over him, hoisting him onto a chariot, bore him back to the sacred walls of Troy. Deep in grief, while his father, weeping freely, walked beside them now, no blood price came this way, not for his son, who breathed his last in battle. But Paris flared in rage at his comrade's death, his friend and guest among all the Paphlagonians. Incensed, he let loose with a bronze-tipped arrow aimed at one Eucena, a son of the prophet Polydeus, a decent, wealthy man who made his home in Corinth. Well, Eucena knew that boarding the ships for Troy meant a certain death. His father told him so time and again, the strong old prophet said. He'd die in his own house of a fatal plague, or go with the ships and die at children's hands. So of Euchenna sailed, both to save his red from the heavy fine the Argives made deserters pay, and himself from wasting illness, no slow plague for him. Suddenly Paris struck him under the jaw and ear, the life flew out of his limbs and the hateful darkness had him in its grip. The rest fought on, like a mass of whirling fire, but Hector, dear to Zeus, had no idea. Hector heard nothing of how his men, left of the ships, were torn and mauled in the Argives' rough response. The glory might even have gone to them at any moment. So intent was the god who grips and shakes the earth as he surged his archives on and the god surged too, adding his own immortal force in their defense. But Hector kept on driving too. Just at the point where he first broke through the gates and the wall he charged, he smashed the Archean's lines, dance with armed men, there where Prodeselos and the giant Ajax ships lay hauled up in the breaking, churning surf, and the wall to landward dipped low to the ground. The weakest point where the fiercest fighting raged, waves of children's children horse in assault. Bogged against them, Boeotian troops, Ionian troops, with their long war shirts, Low cries, Parthians, a man of Ipia, famed in battle, fought to stop this Hector, hurtling at the ships. Nothing they did could thrust him off their lines. Prince Hector, rowing on like a torch, not even the picked Athenians led by many Theus. Petuus' son, and backing him came Phidus, Stachius, brave Beas, then the Ipian unit led by Magis, Phileus' son, Amphion, Dresius, and leading the Phaethian ranks, came Modin, Medon, flanking Pydarsis, tough in skirmish, Medon, the bastard son of royal king Oilus, little Ajax's brother, but Medon lived in Phileus, Banished from native land, he'd killed a kinsman dear to Oedes' wife, his stepmother, Ariopis, but Iphiclos, son of Philocus, bore Pedocrates, brother in arms. He and Medon led the Phaethians out in the forefront of those gallant soldiers, fighting besides the Boeotians now to give to save the ships. But Oedes' son, the racing Ajax, not for a moment, not at all, would he leave his giant brother Ajax. Shoulder to shoulder, they fought together here, 
close as a breeze of wine dark oxen matched in power, dragging a bolted plow through packed pallow land, and the sweet rushes up at the roots of both their horns. And only the width of polished yoke keeps both breast together, struggling up the fury to cut the field's last strip. So both men stood their ground, bracing man to man, and a flock of comrades, hardened combat veterans, followed the great Ajax, ready to take his shield whenever sweet and labor sapped his knees, but no lacrons followed the harshly. Little Ajax. They had no love for stand and the fight encounters, had no crested bronze helmets to guard their heads, no balanced shields in their grasp, no ashen spears, only their bows and sling of springy. Twisted wool trusted them. They followed their chief to Troy, shooting with these salvo on pelting salvo. They tore the children's battle line to pieces. So the men in the heavy armor fought at the front. They grappled the children's and Hector helmed in bronze, while Locrine slung from the rear reef out of range, till the children's troops forgot their lust for blood. As showering arrows raked their ranks with panic. Deadly going, then and there, the children might have been rolled back. Far away from the ships and tents to wind town Troy, if Polydamus had not rushed to headstrong Hector. Impossible man, won't you listen to reason? Just because some god exalts you in battle, you think you can beat the rest at tactics too? How can you hope to... Garnier all the gifts at once. One man is a splendid fighter, a god has made him so, once a dancer, another skilled at a lyre and a song, and deep in the next man's chest, far seeing Zeus, plans the gift of judgment, good clear sense, and many reap the benefits of that treasure. Troops of men he saved as he himself knows best, so now I will tell you what seems best to me. Look, the battle burns like a swirling crown around your head, but our valiant Trojans, once they scale the wall, some fall back from the front, idling in armor. Others soldier on, squads against mass formation, scattering helter skelter round the halls. Draw back now, call the best of our captains here. This safe ground, then we can all fall in and plan our tactics well. Whether we fling ourselves against the ships, if Zeus would care to hand us victory now, or beat retreat from the beach and cut our lo losses, I fear they'll pay us back for yesterday's triumph. I'm going to stop here today and continue next time. Thank you for watching.